this work originated was made possible by the Harvard Stem Cell Institute uh, well over five years ago when we had this notion that we could learn more about hematopoietic stem cells by analyzing the bone marrow cavity um, as an organ where these cells originate and where they give rise to all their progeny. So we applied these uh, imaging approaches, which is, involves at one level a two-dimensional analysis of hundreds of thousands of cells. We complemented that with our three-dimensional whole tissue mount immunostaining. And together we gained insight in how these rare stem cells are distributed within the bone marrow and to get an idea what their metabolic profile was. We applied this information, this, this technical uh, approach, to understanding how the hypoxic profile or metabolic profile of stem cells, whether that was indeed dictated by the, by the bone marrow cavity. And it turned out that this metabolic profile is preserved irrespective of localization in the bone marrow cavity. The markers for hypoxia are all based from tumor biology, where they show that in tumors that those hypoxic cells are a distance away from vasculature because vasculature brings oxygen, so if you're farther removed from the vasculature, then you're likely to be, hy then you're hypoxic. And then they applied that model to stem cell biology. Well, stem cell biology and those experimental tumors are quite different. And as you'll see in these movies, there's vasculature everywhere in, in the bone marrow. Even if you put the cells out of their hypoxia, out of their environment, they still retain that metabolic profile. Then their model went on to say, okay, um, just like in tumor cell biology, stem cells are in fact quiescent, and the hypoxia and, and metabolic profile associated with hypoxia is what probably influences their quiescent state. So what we found is that there's something specific, unique about stem cells that they intrinsically regulate that metabolic profile and that, they're, that the, it's not the extrinsic oxygen content of the marrow. And it, and it turns out that there's a good explanation for that because the model is not based on direct measurements of oxygen in the bone marrow cavity. It's all by indirect methods. But that's how science starts. You develop a model, and people do more research, and they pursue the truth, and they find out that it's more complex.